to another session of the SaaS Adventure Series. Today, I'm joined by Jyoti Bunsel, the founder of AppDynamics, which is based in San Francisco, a very fast-growing company. Um, and thank you for taking the time, Jyoti. Thanks so, for inviting me, Rich. Let's start, uh, let's start on the personal side first. Uh, like my parents, you originally uh, born in India, came to the US. Tell me about that a little bit. Tell me about you know, leaving your family behind and coming to America. Yes, so it's a very similar story. You know, uh, so I grew up in India. I studied engineering. I studied a lot of business when I was growing up as a as a, as a kid in some variable. So uh, I wanted to have business in technology. Technology, the the mecca for technology is Silicon Valley. So I, I went to one of the top schools uh, for computer science uh, in India, and I just wanted to come to Silicon Valley. So I started applying for for jobs here, and I was able to. Uh, get a good job in a in a very small startup at that point, and that's where that's how I came here. So I was I was 21. Uh, just uh, that's where I wanted to be, and that's that's where I ended, ended up. That's great. Did you always know growing up that you were going to start a company one day? Uh, yes, that's what I I, I wanted to. You know, I I grew up uh, uh, in a in a family where my my dad owned you know a few small businesses. So as as a, as a so my dad had a business of supplying irrigation machinery to farmers. My dad had a business of you know selling uh, like a retail shop, selling ladies' handbags, right? So I grew up helping my dad when I was like a kid in business. Right? So after school, and it's very common in India when you're growing up there, you go go to the your dad's business and help him with that. So that's you know I was always fascinated by by business. Uh, I you know that's that's the, you know I learned a lot of business why like as a as a twelve year old if you are selling ladies handbags to in a, in a crowded market in India you learn a lot about business right so it's uh, I studied uh, engineering I was I really I really liked technology I liked the concept of technology so to me combining the two together is something what I wanted to do uh, so that's that's uh, that's uh, yes that's that's where I wanted to be always I, I love learning something new about you and. Thinking of you and ladies' handbags is an image I've never thought of. So that's, thank you for sharing that. Well, let's talk about the process of, of taking an idea uh -huh. in your head and actually, uh -huh. you know, taking it to product, uh, taking it to market. Um, you know, I often think that one of the hardest parts of a founder's journey is establishing product market fit. Uh -huh. Can you tell me a little bit about how you went about doing that at AppDynamics? Yeah, it's um, finding product market fit is the first major step and the hardest step in any founder's journey, right? Uh, what I, I do believe is that founders have to own it. You can't really find someone else to do it. That is the prim first and the primary job as a founder. Right? So the, the thing that I, I learned very early on is uh, I really didn't have challenge building technology. That's something where I, my background, my passion was. But uh, to find the product market fit, you really have to marry the technology to a problem. So my, my very first job is when I came to my first startup here, uh, we are building something like one of the, I would say one of the coolest technologies for distributed computing, and the company was started by three, uh, you know, I would call scientists from MIT, uh, and we built some of the really great technology, but we couldn't figure out how to sell it or how which problem do you uh, do you uh, solve from it. Uh, the technology was eventually sold into, to, you know, eventually sold into Microsoft to search. But the, my lesson learned was like never build technology for the sake of technology, right? You you are you want to solve a hard problem, uh, you want to solve problems that people will pay money for. So when I started, when, so my idea at AppDynamics was that uh, that uh, every business in the world is building software applications, and uh, and people would need help in making sure the business results are there from those software applications, right? And the complexity of of ensuring that would be really high. But now it's like that you start with a concept, you start with a concept, you know so the technology behind that concept, but you have to find the right product market fit, right? So the approach that I took very early on when we were like a very small group of engineers, we were uh, you know, three or four engineers, the rule I set was that every week you have to find two potential customers to talk to. And it doesn't matter what we have to talk about. If you only have a paragraph to, to, to you know, at, and a high level concept to talk about, we still have to talk about them. If we have a PowerPoint, we would use that. If we have a uh, prototype to show, we'll do that. If you have a demo to show, we'll show that. If you have an alpha installation, we could we could try to sell someone. We would do that. But every week we have to do two customers to talk to, and it's uh, that's the rule we set from pretty much day one. And uh, so in the period of like you know, it took us about 15 months to find the product market fit. But while going through it, but by the time we got there, we 
we had like really strong customers who were interested. We refined the product, and the idea got changed. The, or not the, the the priorities of it get changed. You know, it's uh, it's because you don't know all the answers when you start. Say a little bit more about getting these two customers on the phone. It's it's hard enough to get them on the phone, but now you got them on the phone. Uh -huh. what, what questions do you ask them? Um, you know, it's getting them on the phone is hard. Is 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 hard, and the what the way we always framed the conversation was, and, and, and normally I would use something like LinkedIn. You know, it's as a, as a that was my first uh, time learning cold calling and you know, some yeah. reaching out people cold, right? So you will will we'll reach out people on LinkedIn who seem like the right kind of people, and I'll tell them like we we are working on something that may be interested uh, interesting to you in this particular area, uh, and we want your feedback. And that's how we frame the conversation. That is, it's not really about trying to sell you something. We just really want your feedback. So the conversation when we will get in there would also be about that. Like you know, it's uh, that uh, is this a valid problem? Are, is is this a valid problem? How are you solving this problem now? And uh, if we solve it in a different way, which is a completely new way of solving this problem, does it make sense to you? And the the question that you know I learned over time was uh, actually the the learning was that I, what I found was that most people are nice. They don't if they don't like uh, you know your idea. Many times you ideally want people who would say yes, I, it sucks. I don't, I, you know, it doesn't make sense. A quick no. A quick no. But uh, most people are not like that because as a founder, you will be like so passionate. You will be talking about you know your 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 passion about something. Yeah. So people are nice enough to not say no in, in your face, right? But what I learned was that that's the wrong thing that hurts us if people don't say no, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you get them to say no, or or how do you get them to think hard about it? So the question I learned that worked the most was I would ask them at the end, like, how would you make the business case to your boss to pay for this? And that's when you know, uh, you know, people were yeah. I, I, uh, that's when people will start thinking about if I go to my boss, which you know, if I have to buy, I have to make the business case. Mm -hmm. This is where I would talk about like this is the value is this, and if they if they couldn't think of a business case, it will come out in the conversation as well. So that's 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 the the rule we ended up with that every conversation has to end with how would you make the business case to buy this uh, to your boss. And that's, that's, that helped really a lot in finding the product market. That's a, great, that's a great litmus test. Ultimately, you know, how do you justify this to your boss? Exactly. I, I like that a lot.